are still joining us in the live stream as well. Now, um, in just a few moments after I speak with you, we're gonna share with you a video just to go over a couple of protocols and procedures that we put, we have put in place in order to ensure that everyone who comes here, uh, that would be, it would be as safe uh, for you as possible. Uh, and so I ask for your patience and for your cooperation so that we can ensure that our liturgy flows naturally and, uh, and effectively. It's one thing that we do ask you to keep in mind is the, the communion procedure. And so we're mindful of those who cannot be here with us just yet and, and for the easy uh, access to sanitization, uh, cleaning afterwards, uh, we have moved communion to after the final blessing and recessional hymn. So uh, as soon as the Mass is over, we will have three stations for Holy Communion, one in the front, one in the middle, and one by the baptismal font. And we will have ushers guiding you one pew at a time to form one single line to receive communion. Uh, you're welcome to stay to pray. However, we do have a confirmation Mass at one o'clock today. And so we want to clean as soon as possible. So I do encourage that once you receive communion to, to leave, to leave the church and use your dri the drive home as a time for thanksgiving and meditation. Uh, and I do encourage that you use the side entrance, uh, side doors to leave so that we don't have a, a major jam in the back there of people trying to leave. So I thank you. I thank you for your cooperation and my friends. It is good to see you. Welcome home. God bless you. And so now please pay attention to the video that we put together and, uh, and just follow the protocols. Thank you. Welcome to St. Paul Catholic Community. We extend a special welcome to visitors and hope that you will make this parish your spiritual home whenever you are in the area. During this time, to safeguard the well-being of those who have come to worship, we ask you to pay attention to the following protocols while at Mass. In addition to the regular schedule, we have overflow Masses at 4 p.m. on Saturday and 11 a.m. on Sunday. Once the church has reached the authorized capacity, you will be directed to the overflow in the Holy Family Room. If you are not feeling well, please do not come to Mass. To maintain social distancing, do not sit in the roped off pews. Please sit on either end of available pews and do not cross the marked lines. Please drop your envelopes into the poor boxes by the exits. The bulletin is only available electronically. All announcements will be posted on the screen prior to Mass. Please limit the sign of peace to a bow or a verbal greeting. To be mindful of those who are not yet able to join us in person, and to better coordinate effective sanitizing, Holy Communion will be distributed after the recessional hymn. Please follow the direction of our ushers. Receiving Communion on the hands is preferred. If you wish to receive Communion on the tongue, please wait until after the others have received. That way the priest can properly sanitize his hand before and after. We encourage everybody to wear a mask, and we ask that you lower your mask to receive communion. Refrain from lingering to socialize after mass. To avoid different hands touching the door handles, the restrooms are locked. A staff member will be available to open the door at your request. We appreciate your understanding. In spite of these restrictions, our worship will be a prayerful time to give God thanks for his abiding presence and unconditional love for each of us. May God bless you.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, before we enter into the mysteries of this Mass, let us reflect on those times in which we have failed to answer God's call to holiness and ask Him to forgive us for our sins and help us to grow in our faith. Lord Jesus, you are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray, O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine graces that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the heart of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, 
Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travel travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Sun. 
Father's in the midst of woe. Our inmost being filled. Where you are not, we have not. Nothing good indeed of heart. Nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away. the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore. In your sinful gift descend. them joys that never end. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening, that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. I've, uh, I've mentioned before, but just in case you didn't hear, if you've forgotten, um, I am one of the few proud native-born Floridians in this state. I grew up over in Titusville, which is over on the coast. I was born there, and I lived there until I went away for college. Then I moved back to the coast when I came back for working after college. One of the interesting things, if you're a kid from Titusville, that probably no other kids in the world really do very much, that we're pretty much used to, is 
it's very common for us to see rockets going off and coming back down. So I grew up my whole life seeing rockets launching, hearing them going up, seeing the shuttles going up. Uh, when I would go to school, whether I was in elementary school, which is at our Catholic church there, St. Teresa's, or if I was going to my high school, Titusville High, every day going down 50 to where US-1 intersects, because both the church and the school were on US-1, we could always see the VAB. If you don't know what the VAB is, that's the Vehicle Assembly Building. It is a huge building that's designed to hold rocket ships. It's so big that it can actually generate weather patterns inside the building. There have been times when there have been thunderstorms in the VAB because it's that massive, uh, especially when they have the AC running so they can keep the, the, the ships at the temperature levels they need them to be because it causes this huge differentiation in the temperatures in the building. So I grew up watching this happen. I grew up with friends um, whose parents all worked for NASA. My mom uh, almost worked for NASA for a little while, and I came along and screwed that up. Um, but that was, it was such an ordinary thing for us to hear the, the floors shaking, to, to, to see the windows rattling from a, a rocket launching or, or coming back in, to, to hear the, the, the pops from the, uh, the sonic booms when the shuttle would come back in. I remember very distinctly at one point when I was a kid, we were just sitting in class one day, and we hear the, the popping sound. We looked out the window, and there's the shuttle just flying back to Kennedy. We're like, oh, there it goes. And it was such a common thing for us. It was almost a boring thing sometimes. We, you know, to, to think that for kids that rockets launching would be boring, but I must have seen hundreds of them, hundreds upon hundreds of them going off between the shuttle program, between the satellites that we launch, and all the other different things. It was, for us, it was as ordinary as, as traffic. Um, in fact, the only thing extraordinary about shuttle launches would be when the traffic would come in, we'd have to leave early, which always made us upset when we were kids because we couldn't watch cartoons a little bit longer. We had to get in the car, and Mom would have to figure out a way to drive through the little side streets to get us to school so we could avoid all the traffic on Highway 50 and US-1. So that was my life. That's how we grew up. We saw that happening. And it was normal, it was typical, and everybody's family was involved in it in some way, shape, or form. When I was in fifth grade, a very, very cold January. It must have been maybe in the 40s. Now, I know for some of you, you're saying that's not that cold, but I'm a Floridian. I told you I was born here. It's cold. So it was in the, the low, four, maybe even the high 30s at this point in the day. But uh, because it was so cold, the teachers had decided normally when a, a shuttle would launch, we'd all go outside to watch it go up because it was going to disrupt class anyway, so the nuns would take us all outside. So, uh, but on this day, it was just so cold, they said, you know what, no, they don't need to go outside. They can stay in their classrooms. It just happened that my class, we were in science class. Mrs. Hutnick in science. I have no idea what we were studying at the time. But uh, the shuttle was getting ready to launch. And she said, well, let's all go over and watch it through the windows. And we're like, OK. Beats, beats listen to class. So we all got up. We walked over. And, and we watched, like we've done a million times before, we watched it go up. And we all knew this by heart. And then, and then all of a sudden, the clouds split like this, made a big Y shape in the sky. And that's not what's supposed to happen. And we started getting uh, people coming up from the principal's office. Because back then, you know, there wasn't really fancy systems. It was the 80s. And we found out that it had blown up. And we didn't know what to do with that. It was devastating for our town. It was, it was awful. I can't begin to explain to you how for a town where the space industry was a core part of who we are, how that just shook us to the bone. And we, were, we couldn't go outside to play that day because they were worried that parts of the shuttle might come down on top of us because they didn't know what the trajectory was for it to fall down. And we were scared and sad and confused. A, a couple days later, uh, one of the news, I think it was Channel 6 news, 
they came and to, we had a, a mass, a memorial mass for the astronauts. And they came and videoed us having mass. And they're interviewing some of the school kids afterwards. And it was just, I mean, you know, I knew, I literally knew the people that made the shuttle fly. One of my best friend's father worked on the orbiter. He put the engines in. I had another friend whose dad was literally a rocket scientist. There was a girl in my class who, this traumatized her for years. Her dad was in charge of doing the safety checks on the SRBs, on the booster rockets, the ones that blew up that day. And just what he went through with his own doubt and just not trusting himself because... And in the years to come, it was still tough for us. Uh, industry had a hard time. You know, we, we had McDonnell Douglas, we had Lockheed, we had all these companies in our town. My uncle was a computer engineer for McDonnell Douglas, and he was one of the very first people on Earth to have, well, what back then would have passed for Internet, uh, because he had a system set up where he could actually come home and he could monitor satellites from his home computer um, so that he could be, he, when they were doing something important, he could leave the office and still be connected with everything that was going on. And these were people that were literally making these things go up and down. And they were beside themselves, and they were worried they are going to lose their jobs. And we did. Some of those plants closed. Some of them moved out west, where it was a little bit less expensive for them to be, so they could be near to uh, the production plants in California and Arizona. It was a very scary time. We saw a lot of little businesses folding in our town. And it shook us, because it, it took away our confidence for something that was so normal and so regular for it. You know, spaceships don't blow up. That's something that happened once in the 60s. It doesn't happen anymore. How could this have happened? And I'm saying this because, you know, right now we are in a very difficult time period. And there's some businesses that aren't going to make it. And there's some people that are scared. And a lot of these things are becoming very political and people are becoming very agitated over the smallest things. I've heard people having knocked down drag outs over masks and gloves and stuff like that. You know, right now there are riots going on in some of our cities over racial tensions, over a horrible thing that happened. And we might be looking at the world and saying it's very scary. But um, at the same time, you know, yesterday I was at, at the rectory and I, I turned on the television and I was looking at a view of Launch Pad B, which I have seen a thousand times in r real life. I've been up to the thing, I've touched the thing, I've sat on the concrete block that's there. They took us all there to take pictures of it when I was in junior high. So for me, watching it on TV is actually more surreal than seeing it in real life. And I, I watched as we for the first time in years since we shut down the, the, the shuttle program, had a successful launch. And it's, it's, it's funny for me, because I, I watch this happening, and I'm listening, and I've seen so many, I've heard so many. I know, I, I may not be a scientist, I may not understand what all the little things are, I'm not an engineer, but I know everything that's going on. I can count down right along with them. You know, two minus two minutes, go for fuel, T-minus one minute, final weather check, T-minus 20, 15, T-minus five, go for launch, go for full main engine, and watching it going up and holding my breath, because to this day I'm scared, until I finally hear T-plus 222, go for main engine release and separation happens. And we put a rocket into space with two men on it. And they orbit around our planet yesterday. And they're able to go to the International Space Station. They're gonna be able to go there and then safely come back here. And so regardless of the worries and fears that we went through when I was a kid, through our ingenuity and our courage 
our desire not to let these things get us down, we, as the American people, were able to once again go into space. And through the work and effort of so many people, we are preparing a system where we are going to go back to the moon and please God in my lifetime have manned Mars missions. And I'm saying all this because right now in a time where we can feel very hopeless, where we can look at the world and say there's so much pain and so much violence and so much misery, we need more than ever to look for hope, to look for courage. And we find that in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will always bring us what we need. Courage, faith, love, charity, wisdom, awe of the Lord. The Holy Spirit will provide us with the gifts that we ask for if we are only willing to ask for it. To trust in the Spirit. It's the greatest gift that God gave to us. It's the gift that Christ left for us. When he returned to his Father, he said, I am sending you you should be glad that I'm going because now that I'm going, I can send the advocate to you. And he's going to empower you so that you can witness to my gospel. So that despite all the bad things that are happening in the world, and there's always going to be bad things in the world. Our world is broken. There's always going to be troubles and difficulties. But that's what we are called to do. We are called to step up, and even though we may be afraid... And even though we may be looking back at the past and saying, but so many bad things happened, we can be brave, we can be hopeful, we can be faithful. We can ask for the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts so we may help the Lord in renewing the earth. I believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven. Was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, trusting in the Lord's love and mercy, let us offer to him our petitions. We pray for our Pope, for our bishops, the Lord will bless them with wisdom, strength, and courage as they lead his church on earth. We pray to the Lord. We pray for world leaders. They may listen to the Lord's call to serve those, especially the most vulnerable in our society. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who are sick, for all who are suffering, especially those who are dealing with the COVID-19 virus. The Lord will guide them, care for them, ease their pain and suffering, let them know his loving mercy. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are in the face of danger right now, whatever it may be, that the Lord will help to ease fear, ease tensions, and let his love enter into the hearts of those around us. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our St. Paul community, for those prayers written within our book of intentions, for those intentions we keep in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. 
Holy and loving Father, we thank you for hearing us. We know that you always hear us. We ask you now to accept these prayers which we offer to you and answer them in a way that will help us grow in our faith and to spread your gospel message. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for bringing your paschal mystery to completion you bestowed the holy spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten son the same spirit as the church came to birth open to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they are clean.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For our brothers and sisters that cannot join us this day, let us together offer an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, Save God, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we conclude, just a, a reminder that what we will do is, at the end of Mass, uh, we will begin the distribution of Blessed Sacrament. Please wait for your ushers. They'll be standing there to let you know when it's time to come forward. Uh, just please be, please be mindful of each other. Uh, when you do come to take communion, you can lower your mask then, but otherwise go ahead and keep it up. Uh, and then once you've received communion, while we understand if you want to stay and pray, uh, we'd like to encourage you to please use the doors, especially the ones that are close to you here, so we can make sure that we don't have people bumping into each other. So if you come up this way, you may want to avail yourselves of the doors up here. If you're all the way in the back, you may want to use the back doors, but that way we can make sure that everybody's staying safe and socially distant and that we are all doing our best to help each other out in this time. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace.